In today's class, we will see about electrostatics of conductors. You know what is a conductor? So, I'll write here electrostatics of conductors. So, conductors, as we know, have more number of free charges which are free to move. That is how it can, you know, because the electrons move, we say there is a current. Conductors have free charge carriers, which can, which are free to move. Uh, if you take a metal conductor, they have more number of free electrons, moving free electrons. In a metal, the outermost electron, that is valence electron, are free to move. So, these electrons actually move within the metal, but they will not leave the metal and come out. If we apply some external field, so this they will move in the direction opposite to this electric field. Let us see some of the properties of conductors. properties of conductors the first one is inside a conductor electrostatic field is zero inside a conductor electrostatic field is zero or electrostatic field inside a conductor is zero inside a conductor electrostatic field is zero we will see how it is let us say we are applying some external field E naught across a conductor an external field E naught is applied across the conductor Now what happens? When an external field is applied, the free electrons which are there inside the conductor experience a force. The electrons inside the conductor experience a force which is given by minus E into E naught. The minus sign indicates the force is in a direction opposite to that of E naught. So, when an external field E0 is applied, the free electrons experiences a force which is in a direction opposite to the field of that of E0. So, due to this force, the electrons in the conductor move in a direction which is opposite to E0. So, they all accumulate on one side of conductor and that part that side of the conductor becomes negatively charged. On the other hand, the positively charged will move in the opposite direction of that of electrons and they accumulate on the other side of the conductor. So, that pass that side of the conductor will become positively charged. So, what happens is an electric field sets up inside the conductor. I can draw this situation. So, I will take a conductor and we set we are applying some external field E naught. These are you know field. This direction. This is the direction of E naught. So, 
so this is our e naught so the free electrons experiences a force minus e into e naught the electrons move in a direction opposite to the direction of e naught so all the electrons will accumulate this side so this side of the conductor becomes negatively charged similarly the other side becomes positively charged Now what happens? So an electric field sets up inside the conductor, and if you see, its direction is opposite to that of E naught. So this, you know, uh, the electric field which sets up in the inside the conductor, which is opposite to direction of E naught, and it builds up until it becomes equal and opposite to E naught. since inside the conductor we have the external field plus the field developed due to this uh, moment of charge carriers so the resultant e inside the conductor becomes zero so resultant field is zero this is how we can explain this inside a conductor electrostatic field is zero the next property is at the surface of a charge conductor at the surface of a charge conductor electrostatic field must be normal to the surface at every point so this point gives the direction of the field on the surface of the conductor at the surface of a charge conductor electrostatic field must be normal to the surface at every point so if you know we can explain like this if the e is not normal if the field is not normal to the surface then it will have some non zero component like if it is not normal then we can uh, have two components one is uh, the horizontal component and another one is the vertical component so non zero component it can have and this non zero because of this non zero component the free charges on the surface of the conductor would experience a force and then it will start moving so in the static situation e should be normal it should not be uh, tangential because if it is tangential we will have components and this component will move the uh, make the free electrons to move So, but that is not the situation uh, for example this situation we can explain like this uh, so if this is the case and if e is not normal say let me say it has some tangential S this can be you know we can how then components of e one is the horizontal component ex another one is vertical component ey so let me say these are the charge what happens now because of the components 
the charges on the surface will experience a force and they will start moving that means there is a surface charge but that is not the case so in the static condition we no, do not have any uh, surface current so for this to happen we should have we should not have a tangential e we should have only the field which is normal to the surface because we know in the static condition there is no surface current for this to happen so we should have e only normal to the surface not this tangential e so remember electric field at the surface of a charged conductor must be normal to the surface at every point also the third point the interior of a conductor the interior of a conductor can have no excess charge in the static situation the interior of a conductor have no excess charge in the static situation so if we consider a neutral conductor there is neutral means the number of positive charges is equal to number of negative charges so when the conductor is charged the excess charge can reside only on the surface in the static situation so there is no interior the inside the conductor the charges does not reside they reside only on the surface of the conductor so no charge resides in the interior of a conductor the meaning is no charge resides on the resides in the interior of a conductor interior of a conductor any charge given to a conductor resides only on its outer surface conductor resides only on its outer surface the fourth one is electric potential is constant throughout the volume of a conductor electrostatic potential potential as constant throughout throughout the volume of the conductor and has the same value as inside on its surface so if you consider a conductor the electric potential is constant on the surface of the conductor so surface of a charged conductor is an equal potential surface remember this point also surface of a charged conductor is an equal potential surface <coughs> surface of a charged conductor is an equal potential surface
if you consider a conductor with some <coughs> positive charge on its surface <coughs> if you take a you know, potential on the surface electrostatic potential on the surface is equal at all different points on the surface of the conductor so if potential is v so at each point it will be v also this point fourth point says electrostatic potential is constant throughout the volume of the conductor and has the same value as inside on its surface so if inside is v the outside is also v so they'll have has the same value as inside on its surface and it is constant throughout the volume these are some of the properties of electrostatic conductors and the last point is electric field at the surface of a charge conductor as this we have already derived is as e is sigma by epsilon naught you can write it in vector form also where epsilon is the surface charge density epsilon is the surface charge density and n is a unit vector normal to the surface in the outer direction